So today's one day build happens outdoors. I am at Pier 17 at the Exploratorium in San Francisco on the San Francisco Bay. It is a beautiful day. It's a little overcast, which is actually better for me for welding. Um, and I'm gonna be doing a bunch of welding because I'm building a strand based outdoors here at the Exploratorium over a couple of days. It'll cut more like it's one day, but it's gonna be a couple of days. I've uh, pulled up my Land Cruiser. I'm setting up a mobile shop, and soon I'm going to be basically welding some cutaway stands and starting to assemble the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of parts and sub-assemblies that make up a walking strand based. Will mine walk? I, I have faith that it will, but I seriously don't know at this point. It's all an experiment. We're about halfway through the rough assembly of this thing, and it's a mind bender. Uh, there are so many triangles, so many struts. Many of them are close to size to others, which means that you can't mess them up. Everything is about the geometry. I have maintained a rigorous control to Theo Janssen's perfect geometry of the strand based, and I'm really trying not to screw it up. One of the key pieces of advice Theo gave me when we met at my cave, that's right, I had him over to lunch at my cave. It was awesome. One of the key pieces of advice he gave me was that this center spine that holds everything in orientation has to be very, very rigid. But that's tricky because it needs a lot of room in the middle for the parts of the strong base to move around. So that rigidity has to come out at the ends and I've done it with some strut. I hope it's enough. I'm not even sure if this thing's gonna hold my weight and my intention is to pedal it. It's getting heavier by the minute. As I'm assembling this thing, there is some slop. Now I built slop into this system, but there's a bunch and I'm not sure how much I can get out. I'm kind of committed at this point. So I keep on reminding myself that when I saw Teo's strand base walk on the beach, it's, it had a little hitch and it's get along. Like it kind of, uh -uh, uh -uh. um, mine's definitely going to have that. I, I just hope that doesn't mean it <laughs> collapses under its own weight which at this point it certainly could. Okay, so. Right now what I'm doing is I'm making sure I'm starting on the cams, the center cams. The whole thing about a strand based is that it operates on uh, cams that are offset by 120 degrees. Uh, and I'm using bearing shaft for my central bearing so that nothing bends or twists instead of mild steel. And uh, I gotta make sure my lengths are all right. There's a lot of moving parts to this. Uh, and I think that is what I'm talking about. So I'm going to do that, clamp it, weld it, and I think we're good. Whew! It's a lot of moving parts to this puppy. Excellent. So I've got one half of the legs set up. I just added some white lithium grease to each of the uh, 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 pivots. And it's actually, the first two legs are turning pretty well. Um, I still have no idea if this thing will support my weight at all, but we'll see. Um, yeah, that's making me feel pretty good. Uh, we can start to weld stuff down at this point um, and continue on with the construction of the second half. I'm provisionally excited. You want me to take these apart and loop them inside? That would well? be great. That would be great. And go ahead and do the clamping on them. Yeah. Want to do shoes? Yeah. Okay. Here's how this works. All right. I don't care about the numbers. Yep. 
but I want lefts on the left, left side, rights on the right. And even the back. And in yeah. even the back, right. Now I said that Teo had given me two great pieces of advice. One was to make the spine rigid. The second was to allow a little bit of play in the feet when they hit the ground. And so I have done that. I've put in a little piece of UHMW bearing material and I've allowed the foot to have about two and a half inches of slide each time it lands. Hopefully that's enough. But then once the shoes are all in, it begs the question of, do you tie the shoes? The answer is, of course, I don't want it tripping over its laces. So I'm tying them all like this, just a kind of a loose, what do we call that? Teenager tie. Yeah. Um, I love these kind of mobile builds, specifically building the shop that's a bivouac, like trying to figure out all the tools you're gonna to need on site, making sure that not only do I have the welders I need, but also the grinders, uh, the cutting wheels, the things to fix the mistakes that I make with the welder. Uh, thinking through all the ways you could screw something up and then accommodating all those, I've actually done pretty good. I haven't wanted for any specific tool out here. The main one I'm using is actually um, this little welder right there. This is a, uh, a MIG welder. Um, it makes a, uh, uh, an envelope of inert gas, in this case argon and CO2, around the weld to make a very clean weld. This runs on 110 volts, so it runs when you plug it into the wall. And um, I've had one of these welders, it was my very first welder was exactly one of these. Uh, I think I bought it 24 years ago. Yeah, not this one. My first welder I bought 24 years ago, I'm still using the same kind because it's fantastic, especially for mobile work like this. Genuinely hilarious. All right, let's see. Uh, yeah, it's touching, but um, they're all grazing. All right, do you want to help me lift this back? Let's see if we can do that. Three, two, one. Uh. day two of our one day build, which ought to give you some indication as to how it's going. Um, at the end of the day yesterday, my surround base did not walk. Yeah. And after sleeping on it, I came to a couple of conclusions. One, let's remove the feet. They're funny, but if the shoes are getting in the way, I need to know it now. So we pulled all the red shoes off. It still isn't perfect. What we're also seeing, and what I also thought of this morning, is that the main crankshaft might have too much off-angle stuff going on. So we may have to rebuild one side of the crankshaft. However, we're slowly going through this thing, taking out other obvious places where it's catching up and trying to remove those. So it's mostly at this point a war of attrition, slowly chipping away at all the problems we're seeing and seeing if we can't get this thing to a state where it's um, self-mobile. Well, 
The face thing is going in and out. Well, I mean, this one certainly is actually. This is staying pretty. This is aligned with that one. Yep. Here, well, now, these here. two shafts here are different. Like a dose of black. A dose of black. Right now I've welded in a couple of pieces of quarter inch pencil rod to triangulate. I'm noticing that the knees down there are bending on a couple of these legs. Um, so I've put them in hopefully to correct that. Is it gonna correct that? I hope so. All right, so we have a new plan. I don't think this thing's gonna hold my weight. I'm not even sure it's going to walk, but I am pretty sure that I can get it moving with the largest horsepower I have available. And it's not a motor, it's actually my feet. Um, I'm going to weld this bicycle to the underside, to the undercarriage of this thing, and I'll be sitting in my go-kart chair on the ground. Well, on a dolly on the ground, providing the human stomach to make this thing go. That's the theory, anyway. So yesterday was spent, actually the last two days were spent, putting my strand base together and trying to get it to work. Um, last night at 4.30 in the morning was spent waking up and realizing what was going wrong. I transferred all of Teo's key measurements, all of his relationships into my notebook and I missed one. A tiny little three and a half inch dog leg jog that I now need to introduce to an almost completed machine. I'm not sure if it's possible, but now I know what the hitch in my get along has been. So that's what I'm gonna try and tackle this morning. <clears throat> In order to change the strand base geometry, I need to bump up these center pivots by about three and a half inches across the whole thing. I can't do that all at once because it's already built. So I've made some weakening cuts and I'm slowly persuading it with the ratchet strap, just one by one, working my way through it. I'm about halfway there after 45 minutes or so. I'm feeling pretty positive. It's just gonna take a bunch more grinding like this. All right, so here's what I have just done. I have just taken this, which was a straight line, made a couple of weakening cuts, and pulled this entire center pivot of the crankshaft three and a half inches up. Uh, you can see it's now more like a cathedral. This is just one measurement I forgot to put in my book when I started planning this, like an idiot, I never double checked. Hopefully this is enough to get this thing going. I'm about to give it its first push and hopefully I got rid of that hitch that was keeping it from going forward yesterday. All right, so once I changed the geometry, it changed everything, of course it did. So now I was running into this part of the beam. I had to cut that away. Now I'm running into this part of the beam. Got to cut that away. All right, here we go. 
That's a result. <laughs> Frankly, at 4.30 in the morning, that's what I was considering a best case scenario, so. chunks of the frame. We altered its entire geometry this morning. We put in a new chain tensioner, a new spindle holder to get slop out. Uh, this ought to run. I'm also facing very slightly downhill, like a one degree grade. Here we go. Oh. That's, that's, I'll, 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 I'll take that. I'll take that as a success. Awesome. I, 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 I want to talk about what went wrong because I put this whole thing together and boy, it was a, a lesson in how distributed the system is. I knew that, um, but also how critical all the measurements were. And there was a gentleman who was standing over here for much of the time. Where is he? Where is the, yes, sir. Thank you so much. You're welcome. What is your name? Ken. Ken Fujimoto. Ken Fujimoto. Um, Ken was giving ideas to, to, to Herbie here about what was going wrong with my machine. And I was very specific that I wanted to do the problem solving on my own. That's kind of the way I like to build. And so I wasn't going to have this be a collaborative process because that's a Pandora's box. I'm not sure what it's going to be like. But I did, the word got back to me that Ken had said that the central geometry of the Strand base, which is um, these two pivots that are the main pivots for the legs and this central pivot where the camshaft goes, that that relationship was wrong. And I thought, mm, I don't think that it's wrong because it shouldn't make much of a difference. And I thought about it and thought about it and thought about it. And I kept on trying to solve the other problems, eliminate the other variables. And then at 4.30 this, mor this previous morning, I woke with a start and thought, oh, look at the original measurements. I had transferred them carefully into my notebook, all but one. <laughs> and the one that I hadn't transferred was the fact that these three, uh, these three points are not on a line. They actually form a triangle. And that I wanted my triangle, that my, my central crankshaft pivot, to be three and a half inches above the line. So then I was up until five trying to figure out the best way to do it. And I cut this thing up in my head about a million different ways before realizing, dummy, there are eight uprights. All I need to do is measure three and a half inches on those, cut each one, and then I used a bunch of tie straps to really force the geometry into something new. Um, which for me is, I, you know, I, I recognize that it, I could have made it go easier by getting it right on the first try. <laughs> but I think that's a, a, it's a, generally my lesson in life. All right, all right, here it goes. For your viewing pleasure, and thank you guys so much for staying out on a cold Thursday night. It has been a, such a pleasure to talk to you. And thanks to the Exploratorium for all their amazing support in doing this. This is one of my, this is my favorite museum in the whole world. There we go, okay, we're gonna ride home into the mission. <laughs> wait, wait, did I break it? Am I literally caught on a shoelace? <laughs> Who's got a pocket knife? You better cut that. There you go. He's got one. Leather into the recipe. That's it. Thank you, Herb. Ah! Thank you and good night.